as I live and I breathe, Lord, I see my life was created by you, and I know, Lord, you're wonderful. I have proven you by your life in me. Lord, you pray through me how you demonstrate your love. My worship is for you. My worship is for you. I owe it all to you. Oh, Jesus, my worship is for you. My worship is for you. I owe it all to you. Oh, Jesus, as I live and I breathe.
Father, we take this moment in your presence, O oh God. Let me release worship unto you. We say that you're worthy of the glory, you're worthy of the honor, and you're worthy of the praise. I worship go to you. Hey.
we going to play some video. Please be reminded that once you are inside here, you're supposed to have your mask and wear it properly, please. Have your mask on and have it properly. Thank you. May your struggle be Girl, I know you're going through a rough time right now and I just wanted to say be strong and body. All of us who are in today love you and we are praying that you get better soon. You are such a quiet, nice and loving person. We all love you, Daryl. Hope you get well soon and we miss having the wrong Daryl. Daryl, I know you not see well. I pray that you get well soon. I pray the Lord cover you under the floor. And may your pray you give you healing and protection. God is good. May you be blessed. Keep you. Hi, Darrell. I'm sorry to hear that situation, but you're not my enemy. I'll always keep you in my prayers. I'm going to be an actor for health and training. If you need me, I'm here. Hi, you well. I know you've been going through a lot, like these past few months. I know you're still going through a lot. But I just wanted to tell you that we are here for you and that we are praying for you. And that God is with you every step of the way. And He sees your pain and your struggles. And we love you. And hope you get well very, very soon. Good morning, there. I hope all is well. I know you're doing very well yourself, but I hope you get better soon, like very soon. I will be able to plan the devil's cook up for you and your family. And yeah, you got this. Mm -hmm. Love ya. Hi, there. This is your friend, Dariela, and I am praying that you grow stronger each and every day and be comforted by the prayers and love that so Get well soon, and I love you. Bye. I'm more happy to tell you that I appreciate you. I hope you make it through this. I know it's a rough time, but you have to hold the faith in God. You have to hold the faith. God to hear it begin and end. And the Alpha and the Omega. Well, I just want to say get better and get back to your amazing self soon. Sending lots of love and prayers to you from 2G. Darrell, I want you to know that we care for you, we love you, and we are praying for you. You are an amazing young man. And for us to see that here and love you for it, know that God sees it too. And he loves you even more. So stay strong and our prayers are with you and your family, my dear. We love you. And may your troubles show that you need God. And may your battles
I live and I breathe, Lord, I see my life was created by you, and I know, Lord, you're wonderful. I have proven you by your life in me. 
Lord, you pray through me how you demonstrate your love. My worship is for you. My worship is for you. I owe it all to you. Oh, Jesus, my worship is for you. My worship is for you. I owe it all to you. Oh, Jesus, as I live and I breathe. Father, we take this moment in your presence, oh God. And we release worship unto you. We say that you're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. And you're worthy of the praise. I worship all to you. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, 
All right. Is covered for us. Please cover it for us. Yes, I remind you again, please have your mask on and have it the way you should have it. Everybody inside, please. Let's be done. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your road and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, Amit Hamilton. Good morning, everyone. I don't need to ask you how are you this morning, I can assume, I cannot know because I'm not God, but I can assume how you are this morning. But the Bible says that in everything we have to give thanks. There are times, on a time like this, it will be difficult to say thanks for a situation like this, but we still have to say thanks. Because if God was not in the means of it, it would have been worse than the way it is, no matter how it is. And so I want to welcome all of you this morning in this place, in a time like this. And one thing I always like to say during our funeral service, if you want to cry, you feel like crying, cry. Don't hold it, cry, otherwise you're going to spend money at the hospital, which you don't have. 
So cry, but know that God is still in control. Amen? And so I want to welcome you and let's use our wisdom, our understanding, and let's work together for the glory of God. As I said earlier, if you are not family, please, it should be two persons per bench. All right? It should be two persons per bench. Anyway, we don't want any more person inside it. All right? At this moment, I will invite Major Tebane to come and she prays for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we will take some prayers.
at this moment we invite Shenika Hawi, the sister, as she will for us the first reading, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 4. What does it look like in heaven? Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? Does the sun shine and bright forever? Have your faith and your pain gone away. Yeah. 
Amen. Poďte vám tu vedem, pane, na vien za týždy. Ďakujem, ďakujem. Uvedem vám, je to výbude snov, je to výbude jazpolo, je na kým, vám kým doklom, a na LGTM, vám aká výbude. Do you have my there? Alright, apparently the person is not here. We put this out for the club.
One of my own mother, a short lady, she just left us out here. Miss Dishon, she used to be a teacher in the alley. Albert Farmer, he used to be a teacher. Kenneth John, he just left us out here. That I called that, most of us remember that I called her. And I like now Robert Patrick Knight, and we had an ambassador, Roy Austin, that a president of the United States, came this guy from bottom down and made him ambassador in Trinidad and Tobago. You go to all the resources in this now as well, you never find that happen. And that is achievement of Bottom Town. Don't care if you want Bottom Town. It's one of the best villages in St. and Grenadines. We have some good role models. We have some people with standard morale and everything. So when they have to look up to Bottom Town, when they have to look up Bottom Town, all of them have been created some role models, some great role models. The original people that come from Bottom Town, we live in Bottom Town for tell you what Bottom Town is um, the low, the Colzac, the Denny, the Kodogan, the Batiste, the Pollard, and the Jack. These now we live in Bottom Town, we live and still. So, just to tell you about Bottom Town, most people, I go to Bottom Town almost every day. I go to the sea water, I have to ask for excuse to go on the beach. Dog, I can't go after any so on. You know, um, my face is done with cut, cotton, I can't go after it. I go to the other side of my body, I have to ask for excuse to go on the beach right now, I need to go almost a decade. That is how Bottom Town comes, because people who belong to Bottom Town believe they're in Bottom Town, they're not from Bottom Town. They're not from Bottom Town. The original people I just call it from Bottom Town, tell them what Bottom Town, that's a place that wrote this. I'm proud to be a Bottom Town, wrote this one. I've learned a lot, and they made me where I be today. I'm a role model. Small names will go down as a role model for them being for me. This guy, when I visit him at the hospital every day, he never wanted to show me a face different or oh, yard pleasant. Small and tired? Yeah, guy. You show? No, nothing? Yes, guy. But the last time I went to see him, he chose him when I the chance for him for one who watched it in it. He not told me he can't stay too long with him again. So I said, okay. Where is he? He wrote in the corner. So I went there, I met his father, and I said, Smallest, you yeah, are right, I brought, I brought this here to you. And he said, Guys, I'm, I'm ready. That's the last word again. He is ready. What I said, and I came again, his mother, his father, his sister, his aunt, his grandmother, they was all around in 24 7. And I must appreciate when you have somebody like that, the young man who was lost a leg at the age of 13, running there, running there, like nothing. It sends a spirit, it gives it courage. Anybody can take a courage after that young man, this guy. He will go down as history to me and tell God to know as my own mother. He has his own. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. And I'm here to speak on behalf of my school, this is St. Joseph's Convent, Maracua, where Daryl was a student there for three years. Unfortunately, I did not know Daryl as well as some of you know him. So if you went to Kingston Preparatory School or you went to St. Joseph's Convent, 
you would know Daryl better than I would. I only knew Daryl within the last few months of his life. Although I taught his mom, and I will give you a couple seconds to calculate my age, but while you are at eight, you know I'm always 30. But I'm not here to talk about me today, I'm about to talk about Daryl. So, Daryl first came on the radar for me. Um, it was just after COVID, and we had online school. And so his mom called me, very frazzled, because he was trying to submit an assignment, but he wasn't getting it done on Moodle. So she called me, asking me for the number for the teacher. So I said to her, you need to email Miss Williams and let Miss Williams know that what is happening. And for me, that is remarkable, and I will tell you why. Because at that time, I did not know that Daryl was battling cancer. I did not know that he was looming over his head, was the threat of his leg being amputated, as you heard, you heard Mr. Dye now talk about football. All I knew was that this was a student that wanted to do his assignment. And that speaks volume of this young man. Because I know I have students, not a thing is wrong with them. They have device, they have internet, but they won't come to class and they won't do their work. But he is battling cancer, the threat of losing his leg and he's concentrating on his schoolwork. When I speak to teachers about Daryl, they will tell you, he's a very manly young man, he's respectful, he gets his work done. Like his parents, he's very quiet and he's shy. He would only speak unless spoken to. Two things, um, number two. Whenever we visited Daryl and the principal, Mrs. Rose, Miss James, and myself would have visited Daryl several times. And at no point have I ever heard Daryl complain. Despite his pain, Despite all that he was going through, he would not complain. He would never say, I'm in pain. I never saw him shed tears. And I went there a number of times. When at the school, we heard about Daryl's situation. As a school, our motto is Caritas Loving Service. And so we decided that we're going to try to do something to help Daryl. And we had a big sale, and we had a pen where the students were allowed to wear their own clothes. And we tried to raise funds to help offset the cost because you know this is an expensive venture. And so all our staff sends its regard this morning. Three, about a week before Daryl died, I felt in my spirit need to ask him about his soul salvation. And so a week before he died, I went to him and said, Daryl, have you accepted Christ as your savior? And he said, well, I am thinking about it. And I, I explained to him in simple terms what it means to accept Christ, that we are all sinners in need of a savior. And that day, Daryl prayed to receive Christ. When I got out the hospital, I called Mrs. Rose and I said, Mrs. Rose, there will pray to receive Christ. She said, good, because I was there early on and he accepted Christ with me as well. And for me, that is the greatest thing that I take away from this, that I know without a shadow of a doubt, Daryl is with the Lord and I give God thanks and praise. It is good to know that even though this life has gone, but he is not completely lost because he is with his maker. Amen? Amen. We thank God for that. We're going to have 
uvideva bili. Anybody got no?
review. Second picture reading for question 15, 54, to 58. Uh, soon. Welcome. Oh, my God. 
poem by Abi Edward. I cried when you passed away. I still cry today. Although I loved you dearly, I couldn't make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating. Caught the same hands of death. God broke my heart to me. Let you be We're going to sing the other song in the program, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is
Joe to speak for us, Sam Sabbath for a while. God marked him when he gave him birth and took him with his mind. He had grown to be an angel, securing our father's care. His dear little feet now patter along there, the beautiful streets of there. His bright eyes and cheerful face are so pleasant to recall. He had a loving word for each and died beloved by all. Two little hands are resting, a little heart is still, a little son we love is waiting for us just over the hill. Our darling has gone to the angels above, where there's nothing but happiness, joy and love. Gone from this world so full of strife, back to the God who gave him life. So let us not fret or wish him back again to go through the sorrows that come to all men. But rejoice that God chose our sweet flower for his own and has taken him back to his heavenly home. Sad and sudden was the call, so very loved by one and all. His memory is as sweet today as in the hour he passed away. Rest in peace. At this moment, we're going to have the eulogy by Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris.
He was loving as beautiful, manly, quiet, and kind hearted. He loved to observe the sky. He loved to smile and make jokes. He was living with his extended family in Belmont. His mother, Vanessa, sister, Shakini, Shalika, nephew, Ace, grandma, grandmother, Tudi, Auntie, Kenesha, Kimberly, Uncle, Aaron, Kozu, Kara. He adored his mother and was all time put up positive, put up, sorry, protective of her. He was also close to his aunt, sister, and cousin Kara at home. He was loved. In his body, in his body years, he attended the Salvation Army for school and the Kingston Ferry School, and then on to the St. Joseph Convent Marqua. He spent most of his vocation in Baton Town. Demerel developed a passion for football, and he supported the same team as his dad, Real Madrid. When the team is playing and they score, you will hear you will hold him make noise and say to his nephew Ace, you have to be a superstar. His dream was to be like Christian Ronaldo. And one day he will always say that he would like to travel to Spain and play for that same team. When I visit the community of Bottom Town at the North Rose Place, he would spend most of his time fishing with the other kids and when playing football with his friend Tishtan, Joshua, Punta and Tai Tai. On one occasion, the five boys went to the Victoria Park and become a member of the Balcano football team, headed by Mr. Ken and Mr. Gailo. He always talk about traveling. When he heard the team was going overseas, which filled him with joy, he was so happy. He said to his mom, Vanessa, Mom, I want to go. She did what she had to do for him to go. Darren visit Grenada, St. Lucia, and when he come back, he was so excited, he said everything what go on and what they do. He was not awarded one of the most disciplined players on the tour. He was a member of another football team, Glenside Bar Rollers in Mesopotamia era, and was a key player of that group, of that team. He was a member of the downtown family, a group in Rose Place area who organized lots of hope fun going after the teams. He was a frustrated that he always tell his dad I would like to play for BCH, St. Vincent and the Grenadine. In about late October 2020, we saw a change in the way he was walking. When asked, he said, he pulled a muscle. Monitoring the situation, we noticed that just below his knees began to swell. It was then said that he had a tumor and later diagnosed with bone cancer. He did chemotherapy, which he lost his hair, and later his leg was amputated. At first, he was hostile and to lose his leg, but after he learned of, of his condition, he said, 
ever get to be to save my life, do it. The surgery was done on March 25th, 2001, and in short, in a short period of that time, he was back to his normal life. When he had returned to Rose Place, he was received with warm welcome entry of the community, the people of Rose Place, how there was a joy to see him back again, even though he had one leg. His friends was also happy. They take him around, they even camp on the beach, also to do some fishing, even with that one leg. After going back to school, he was carried, carried <coughs> from by the principal, the staff, the student, and was even assigned to of his peer, Anthony Rashid, to help him with his dead clothes. Although he lost his leg, he remained free from, from of his dream to be a footballer with an arm of a physical leg to help him. After a while, it was seen that the upper part of DJ leg that was amputated began to swell. He then noticed a small bump just in his grind area. On the 7th of October, he became very ill and was placed on the Pittsburgh Wall at the Medical Creative Hospital. He was scared from four by his mother, the nurse, the doctor, and that one. Some of the nurse, the doctor, the sister, even the cleaners gave him words of encouragement. The four nurse by the name of Miss Patterson, Foster, Crowley, and Miss Holloway. Fraser, sorry. Fraser, Crowley, and Miss Holloway. Were very close to DJ and it made him very feel very comfortable. When visited by the doctor, the nurse, the relative and friends, he always had a smile on his face. He would all he would talk about the nurse, Miss Patterson, and how she was like, look up to him like a mother. Despite of what was going on, with him, he accept his condition. He remained humble. He continued to feel full content and full of life. He did not even give any trouble. While he was amazed of how rough and strong he was, not once he had shed any tears, but instead he kept strong to all calling. And that's when he saw God present within him. I dare I am not going to ask. Because whenever the doctor come to me, they around. They would say to him, there I am not going to ask. I know the answer. I could. Which would be his reply and smile. On the 4th of September, he celebrated his 14th birthday. He was shared, shown with lots of gifts from the nurse, the doctor, the friends, the relative. Daryl baptized. He gave his life to Christ, although he was in the hospital. And that was something that he knew what he was going through. And he knew the situation. And as this is to speak all young, he really accept his, his condition and being baptized. Due to this unfortunate, he was moved to the main, main surgical ward on September the 21st. And he complained and said, I do not like it there. And the same night, he did not sleep and there had passed away. So you could see he was so comfortable and comfortable where he had so many caretakers in the house 
at that wall and then move, it looks like it moved this joint and happiness with him. He passed away in the week hours of the following morning about 2 a.m. As present, friend, relative, we pray for physical healing, but God granted him spiritual healing. He will always be loved by men who know him. In our hearts, he will be forever. God has an angel, be our angel, our dear son, brother, relative, and friend. Fly high and look over us. We love you. We, the family of Darren Isaiah Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald Harry, would like to thank the principal, the teacher, the student, the church group, the Salvation Army, the doctor, the nurse, the relative. Special thanks to Sonia and Raheem for all your help. Thank you. Church, there was a very pleasing boy, and it really touched my heart by reading this. Year. This is what God knows best, and I think um, he's gone to the, to the pastor. Tempted a child. We are God who is
on behalf of this church and the staff of the Salvation Army, we just want to remind you, Sister Harry, that we love you and we are with you. We know that you know that, but we just want to say publicly that we are with you and we love you. We pray that God will continue to strengthen the family, not only you, but the entire family, and know that God knows the best. At this time, I invite the staff to come as the vendor on our table.
with all who are alive today have an appointment with death. We all here today have a date in the calendar. And each day, God will turn to that calendar and see how many persons go in that day. And so, as the word of God says, just as man is the thing to die once, we are all destined to live this earth one day. We are all destined to go in the grave unless Jesus returns before some of us die. Then we will be cut up to meet him according to the Bible. As it is destined for man to die once, and that's not the end, because when we die physically, there is another life after this life. Yes, there was suffering, he was having pain, he was suffering with different type of sickness, but as we said earlier, now he has no more pain. And it is, it will be very tough to know that we are going through challenges today. And after this life, we are going through more challenges, more pains. Because no matter how long we are suffering in this life, it is just for a moment. It is not forever. It is for a moment. It might take months. It might take years, but it is for a moment. But what about the life after this life? It depends on where we prepare to go. We are going to be in that place forever. No end. If we prepare our lives to be with the Lord, then we will be with the Lord forever. If we prepare our lives to be with, the, with Satan, then we will be with Satan forever. And I want to let you know, friends, it is the plan of the devil, Satan, to have all of us with him. But it is also the plan of God that we be with him forever. There is a difference between being with the devil and being with God. If we are with the devil, we are going to suffer for eternity. If we are with the Lord, then we are going to enjoy for eternity. And so which one are we preparing for? Are we waiting for Him? That's the question we ask. As God, as everyone, every man is destined to die once and after face judgment, meaning that after we leave this place when Jesus returns, or after Jesus returns, we all will have to stand before God to give an account for our own self. The man will have to give an account for himself. His mother, his father, you all here, we all here, will have to stand before God one day and to say how we have lived our lives on earth. Today, I can lie to you. I can pretend to you that I live a life according to God's will. You can lie to me. You can pretend that you live a life that is in accordance with God. But on that day, when we stand before God to give that account, we will not be able to lie. Because everything, everything we do in this life is captured. There's a camera in heaven that is capturing everything we do on this earth. That one will never have black out. Recently we had some issues with internet where we could not do what we had to do. But in that one here, it's always 24-7. 
always there, always on. Everything we do, we stand, we walk, we run, we spin, whatever we do, it is captured here. And at the end of the day, everything will be played in our faces. We will be able to lie. Everyone will stand before God for judgment. But it's a privilege we have because the same way it is appointed for us to die once and face judgment. Also, Jesus Christ has died once and forever. Years ago, Jesus has given his life, given up his life when he was kneeling on the cross. When he faced the challenges for us, where we were supposed to be, he took our place on the cross, he put us behind him and took the fall and then accept our faults, our gifts, and so we can be free today. We can choose to be with the Lord or with the devil. Jesus has died once for all to bear not his sin, but to bear our own sin, to bear my sin. And so today we have a privilege to be with the Lord if we choose to. And I say it again, we will have the privilege to be with the Lord if we choose to, because we have the choice to make. We can choose to be with the Lord or we can choose to be with the devil. And one thing we need to know, we can't be made in between. If we are not with the Lord, then we are with the devil. If we are not to be with the devil, we, then we are to be with the Lord. But we have to make that choice. Jesus, who died, who rose again, who went back to heaven on that Sunday morning, he also will come back. Yes, he will come back not to bear the sins again, but he will come to bring salvation for those who are waiting for him. Notice it, it's just for those who are waiting for him. There's another scripture that says we will find in Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, it describes how it is going to be. In that verse, verse 11, we find that when John was having that vision, he saw. Then he said, I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it, earth and sky fled from his presence, and there no place for them. And I saw the dead, the great and small, Standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and his gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and he and his were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If any man, if anyone names was not written, not found written in the book of life, he will float into the boat or into the lake of fire. The Bible says on that day, on the day of judgment, books will be opened. And imagine that you look at it here, that he said that he saw books. Many books were opened. On the other hand, he saw one book open. That simply help us to understand that we will have more people who will be with the devil than those who will be with God. Because he saw books open. And he saw the names in those books. And he saw another book open. With this book, he saw the names that we will be with the Lord. And the Bible tells us 
if your name is not found in the book, not in the books, in the book of life, then I am sorry. Because we will be thrown into the lake of fire and that one will burn day and night. What a day that will be. Are you waiting for him? Are you preparing to, to, to meet him? It will be a day of happiness. It will be a day of joy. Also, it will be a day of distress. It will be a day of pain. It will be a day of calamity. It will be a day of sorrow. It will be a day where we will not be able to escape from it. And so today, friends, right now, you and I have this privilege we can escape from the books. But we can come and ask the Lord to write our name in the book of life. Are you waiting for him? You know yourself. I know myself. And as I said earlier, I can pretend. You can pretend right now. But at the end, there will be no way to pretend. We will not be able to pay some money to get in. As Jesus said to the disciples, I am the way. Just picture this. Jesus never said that I am one of the ways. But he said, I am the way. That there is only one way. If you are to come in this building, you can use this door, you use that one, you use that one. But to go to the place that Jesus is preparing for is only one door. If we are not able to go through that door, who is Jesus? I am sorry, we can't get in. Daryl or Daryl cannot change that distinction again. Yes, we heard that he gave his life to Christ. We thank God for that. But even if his life was not in connection with God, it is too late for him. But you and I, we still have a chance because we're still alive. We can make a choice. We can make it right with God. It's up to us. We have heard how it's going to be. The choice is yours. The choice is mine to make it right with God. That doesn't mean when we accept the Lord, there will be no more suffering here. That doesn't mean that we will not face tribulation and so on. As a matter of fact, when we give our lives to Christ, that the time problem starts because the enemy is not happy. And because the enemy is not happy, he will try everything in his power to take us away from God. That's why the Bible says that he came to steal and kill and destroy. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ came to give us life and have it give us abundantly. The choice is yours today. Where would I spend my eternity? Where would I go after I leave this God? After this life gone away from me, what will happen to me? The choice is mine today to make it right for God. And I always like to give this opportunity to those who are listening. Is there anyone here today, before you came here, or even now, you have doubt where you're going to be? Well, Jesus is the way. Once you turn on Jesus' side, you are in the right way. The Bible speaks about the road of Jesus is very narrow. And as we saw, books will be open, but only one book. It's a big book that will have many names. And I always like to say this, I don't care where my name is in that book. It's not my intention to be the first in that book. If I am the first in the book, I am happy. But I want to hear before that book close, before they close that book. And when they say, last not least, my name is Paul. 
and I will be satisfied. Will you? You have a chance today. Is there anyone here who wants to make it right for God this morning? Just raise your hand where you are, and I will pray for you. And then we have one more. Is there anyone else who wants to make it right for God? We don't know who will be the next one, you know. Especially with this COVID going around, we don't know who will be the next one. But if you shut down with COVID and you have your life in connection with God, then you are okay. Amen? Let us pray. Just close your eyes, brothers, where you are, sister as well. There are three of them, and I will pray for you. Heavenly Father, I give you praise and honor for who you are. I worship you because we realize there is no one like you. I bow before you to present your children who have raised their hand before you, indicating that they want to surrender their lives to you. I pray, Father, away all their sins. And I pray, God, that you will write their names in the book of life. And as we know that when you write the names in the book of life, the enemy is vexed about it. He's not happy. But I thank you because the enemy has to be not happy, unhappy, in order for you to be happy. And once you are happy, that is okay. So I place them into your hands. Accept them in your family. And I pray God that you continue to watch over them. I pray for all the others who are struggling with their spiritual lives, oh God. I pray God that you help us to understand the time that we are living. It's not a time to play again with our spiritual lives, but it's a time to be saviors with you. Bless us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Right now we're going to pray for the family and I will ask all the family members to stand and as we pray for them. All the family members to stand as we pray for them at this moment. Precious God and Father, I come before you again in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for this family. I want to thank you for the courage that you have given them, for the strength that you have given them, and for being with them from the beginning up to this moment. I pray God that in the name of Jesus, your Son, that you will continue to strengthen them as a journey in this life, O oh God, which is not an easy journey. But we thank you because once you are with them in that, on that road, they will make it safely. So Father, I pray for each of them. I pray for strength. I pray for wisdom. I pray God for energy. So Father, bless all of them. I pray in a special way, God, for Sister Vanessa. I pray for the Father in a very special way. I pray for the Sister and so on. So, Father, I pray that you continue to watch over them. We know now it's a little bit easy because everybody is calling and talking to them. But after today, that's the time that is going to be hard. But, Father, we thank you because you promised to be with them. And once you are with them, even if everybody else leaves them, once you are with them, it is well with them. So Father, we bless your name for them, be with them, comfort them, journey with them. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. We come to the end of the service as we're going to close and we go to the gravesite and we're going to sing this song as we go and
Un épée. Attention, vous avez eu un sac de retour à responsable pour les casquettes ou pas. Please wait until we go with the casquette for you to move, all right? The casquette first. I will be in front and then the casquette behind you. I'm gonna be a dajoni.
your name so sweet. Right in. Come back. Hey, 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 come
As I live and I breathe, Lord, I see my life was created by you, and I know, Lord, you're wonderful. I have proven you by your life in me Lord you pray through me how you demonstrate your love my worship is for you my worship is for you I owe it all to you oh Jesus my worship is for you my worship is for you, I owe it all to you, oh Jesus. As I live and I breathe, Lord I see, yeah. my life was created, yeah. My worship is for you. 